From Giannis Adetokounmpo and Chris Middleton to LeBron James and Anthony Davis, the NBA features some iconic duos. This video shows you the best one-two punches of the new 21-22 season. Right before that, around three quarters of my audience isn't subscribed, so please subscribe. Also hit thumbs up, it takes a few seconds and makes a huge difference. LeBron and AD's pick and roll slash pop proved itself as overwhelmingly dominant two seasons ago in 2019-20. The threat of Davis catching and finishing allows James to go one-on-one -on -one with his matchup and force defenses to quite literally pick their poison. It can be so enticing for a defense's game plan to trap LeBron as he exposes them in space time after time, but that just allows Davis to either knock down wide open perimeter shots or finish with all the space required at the rim. That unstoppable threat was the primary factor which led LA to their 17th championship. He was an honorable mention, but I have to admit, I disrespected Anthony Davis by leaving him off my top 10 players list recently because we can't forget what he did in the bubble. AD dropped an iconic game-saving dagger with the Lakers down 103-102 to the Nuggets in game two of the 2020 West Finals. After three 30-point games in that series against Denver, AD went on to then average 25 and 10 in the NBA Finals. The smoothest shooting, fundamentally sound big man that we have in our game is certifiably a top 10 talent. Davis added muscle while LeBron's getting up there in age. Both superstars will have to bounce back from injuries, but proved to be the best one-two punch at full strength. Up in Milwaukee, a duo that may have took that label from the brow and the king are Giannis and Middleton. Kendrick Perkins blasphemously argued that Giannis was the Robin to Milwaukee's Batman in Chris Middleton. Adetokounmpo's defense, rebounding, and slashing, plus his playmaking, obviously make him the Bucks' most valuable player but Chris proved himself as the team's closer and top perimeter scoring option. Middleton was the third most efficient pull-up jump shooter last season. After first becoming teammates with Giannis in 2013, these two went through playoff failure one after the other in the 2010s, but they kicked off this most recent decade with a ring. Giannis and Chris have become brothers off the court, and between the lines, they were unstoppable this past spring. With the 26-year-old Greek freak and the 30-year-old Cash, with most of their prime years remaining, there's a lot in store for Milwaukee fans. Harden unfortunately was a shell of himself in the second round against Milwaukee after injuring his hamstring in Game 1. Harden fought through that setback, but he was too hobbled to produce anything significant. However, in the small sample size that he and Durant were on the floor together during the regular season, they had a ridiculous 14.8 net rating. James was second among all players in dimes per game last year, nearly capturing his second career assist title with ease. The beard can carve through defenses and throw passes with pristine accuracy. Given that dime dropping, James was meant to play next to an all-time great scorer who scores just as easily as he facilitates. What makes this duo most scary is that when James Harden's locked in and in peak shape, the beard can score just as easily as the Slim Reaper. With Kyrie still unvaccinated, it'll be on those two to develop a championship culture in Brooklyn. Just like the Lakers duo, Jimmy and Bam came into last season's training camp banged up after a grind to get to the NBA Finals and then merely a few weeks off. 2021 saw the Heat get swept in the first round to the team they beat in five games back in the bubble, the eventual champions. Now, Butler and Adebayo have had five months to get their mind and bodies right to try and formulate another run through the Eastern Conference. They'll have the help of Kyle Lowry and PJ Tucker, who will help out significantly on both ends. Lillard and McCollum have experienced what Giannis and Middleton went through at one point, annual postseason disappointments. They need a better supporting cast, but both Dame and CJ still provided all-star numbers in Portland's six-game series loss to Denver in the first round. Rip City's bucket-getting backcourt can light it up from any spot on the court with elusive dribble combos and intelligent operation and pick-and-roll scenarios. Speaking of bucket manufacturers, Chris Paul and Devin Booker led their franchise to its first Western Conference title since 1993. It was only the second time ever that Phoenix made the finals, something that nobody could have predicted a year ago at this time. The Suns hadn't made the playoffs since 2010, but they went 8-0 in the bubble, and after that, the acquisition of CP3 
turned them into contenders. Phoenix lottery picks in DeAndre Ayton, Mikhail Bridges, and Cam Johnson were given the gift of Paul's all-time great passing. Meanwhile, a 24-year-old killer blossomed into a superstar as D-Book resembled the Black Mamba. During the 2021 campaign, Bleacher Report ranked Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray as the number one duo in the NBA. If Jamal was healthy, the Nuggets could have easily won the Western Conference, but tragically the Blue Arrow tore his ACL a few weeks before the playoffs. Murray was a flamethrower in the bubble, leading Denver three wins from the finals at Disneyland. If the MVP this year, and debatably the best player in the league, Nikola Jokic, had Jamal's services, Denver definitely would have made it past the second round, or at least given Phoenix more of a challenge. Jamal's injury should take about a year to recover from, and it's unlikely he'll be healthy for the 2022 playoffs. When he's on the floor though, the spacing of Murray and Jokic opens up everything for the Nuggets role players. Aaron Gordon, who they acquired at the deadline, failed to produce in a bigger role, and moving MPJ back as the third option, that's where he's best suited. Getting Murray back to 100% means everything for the Nuggets fan base and front office. They aren't the elite names like most on this list, but Pascal Siakam and OG Ananobi I see taking the next step in 21-22. Two years ago, Pascal Siakam was the number two option on a championship team, and even though I was hard on him after a rocky season in 2021, I'm predicting Spicy's going to prove he can be a number one guy in 2022. Combined with Siakam's breakout, I think OG Ananobi's going to have a first team all defense type year, so that's why I put Toronto's duo on this list. The New York Knicks duo of Julius Randle and RJ Barrett may not have performed that well in the first round of the playoffs, but they deserved recognition on this list for leading New York basketball back to respectability. RJ Barrett has a great chance to break out into an all-star, Randall's looking for his second straight appearance in 2022. Regardless of if they're named all-stars or not, New York has an excellent one-two punch to build around throughout this decade. The newest formed one-two punch on this list may be a tad limited defensively, but they can score as well as anyone mentioned today. Debo DeMar DeRozan is the best creator that Levine's ever been next to, and it's not even close. DeRozan and Levine are two explosive guard-slash-forwards who can tear up defenses in different ways. DeRozan's old school as he utilizes crafty pump fakes in both the mid-range and when he's backing down in the post. Conversely, Zach Levine likes to get it done with three-point shots and blistering blow-bys past his matchup in space. Zach's ability to spot up and shoot from distance is going to be perfect next to DeRozan, who thrives off driving and kicking it out. DeMar just averaged a career-high seven assists per game, so I think he's going to really help out Levine in Chicago. It's been two years of agony in the postseason for the Clippers duo. The first time around, they got torn apart in round two by Murray and Jokic, and most recently, Kawhi suffered a partially torn ACL. In both of those years, Kawhi and George, who are supposed to be lockdown defenders, have gotten lit up by Luka Doncic. When these two teamed up back in 2019, we all thought they'd challenge the Lakers to become the new kings of LA. Now, with the Claws injury, that'll keep him out until 22-23. That leaves so many question marks. It's looking like this will be a failed super team, but with Kawhi not going anywhere, the two-time champ still has a chance to add his third ring at some point. PG-13 bounced back from an agonizing bubble showing by getting the Clippers a few wins from the finals without Kawhi, so that's a good sign. It'll be interesting to see how far the Clippers will go in 2022. I'll definitely make some videos on that in the future. Rudy Gobert wasn't the three-time defensive player of the year in the playoffs. He was extremely slow with his rotations out to the three-point line, as he was lost when the Clippers ran small ball lineups. On the other hand, Gobert's running mate and Utah's franchise player Donovan Mitchell more than did his thing. The Spida was fourth only behind Kevin Durant, Damian Lillard, and Luka Doncic in playoff points per game. A year earlier, Mitchell led the playoffs in scoring, so it's safe to say the man steps up when his team needs him most. Next to Luka, Donovan's proved to be the best young player in our game, and a legit playoff performer. The Celtics' two superstars out on the wing are impossible to hold in check at the same time. If you don't have two premier wing defenders who are quick and long enough to stay with these two, you're going to get lit up. 
Tatum enjoys saucing up defenders and hitting daggers, and while Brown can do the same, Jalen stands out more on the defensive end and in the open court. These two were both mentioned in my Young Superstars video because they helped Boston get two wins from the finals against Miami in 2020 and have helped Boston reach the playoffs every year in the last half decade. Two wings who have the potential to dominate the Western Conference at some point down the line in Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson are the faces of the New Orleans Pelicans organization. The number one pick in Zion can rise up for posters on anyone and the fact that he's a willing screen setter tremendously benefits Ingram, who likes to handle the ball in space. I hope the Big Easy sees their duo eventually take over. You could go in a ton of different directions, but let me know which duo you think is best in the comments section. This was DFlow. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at DFlow Hoops. Hope you have a great one, and I'll see you next video.